Good morning, everyone out there in internet land. This is a very sunny and warm day in upstate Binghamton, New York. And guess what? It's not a big fat lie today. It's actually true. And the dogs want to go out, but you know, I'm, I'm babysitting my grand puppy and he's got a sore paw. So I don't know that we're gonna get out with the dogs today. This is Yvonne DeVita. You're listening to Smart Conversations from Nurturing Big Ideas. And I have an extremely special guest today. You're going to be fascinated and excited um, about this conversation we're going to have. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Yvonne. It's great to be here. I've been looking forward to uh, this conversation. Excellent, excellent. We're going we're gonna to really talk things up here. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Mark before we get going. Mark Anthony JD is the Psychic Explorer. Mark Anthony Psychic Explorer, also known as the Psychic Lawyer, now that's really fascinating because my husband calls himself a recovering lawyer, is a fourth generation psychic medium who communicates with spirits. I found that really fascinating, Mark, when I was reading your book that your parents um, and your grandparents, and I mean, it goes back. So this is kind of, as you said in the book, it's kind of in your DNA. <laughs> it's totally in my DNA. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. an Oxford educated attorney licensed to practice law in Florida. Washington, D.C., and before the United States Supreme Court. This psychic explorer travels to mystical locations in remote corners of the world to examine ancient mysteries and the supernatural phenomena. Mark appears nationwide on TV and radio, including CBS TV's The Doctors and Gaia TV's Beyond Belief with George Nori. He is the co-host of The Psychic and the Doc on the Transformation Network. He's a featured speaker at conferences, expos, universities, which include Brown, Columbia, Harvard, and Yale. He's a columnist for Best Holistic Life magazine. And he's also the author of The Afterlife Frequency, published by New World Library. And he has other best-selling books, um, Never Letting Go and Evidence of Eternity. And, and this is the, the fascinating thing about this, Mark. Um, the psychic lawyer thing is fascinating, obviously. We can, we can say that. But in my world, when I heard you speak on another podcast, that's where I, I met you, I was just fascinated by the fact that you have taken the time to explore this psychic energy that people have. And, to, and what it might mean. And I really wanted to talk a little bit today about something called um, the Soul Phone Project from Dr. Gary Schwartz, which was in your book. Can you tell us about that? I can only tell you a little bit about that. And the reason is that um, I had to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement. Um, Dr. Gary Schwartz, for those of you who are not familiar with him, is the head of psychology, parapsychology, physics, science, um, and I know I'm missing a couple other things at the University of Arizona. He's uh, got degrees from Harvard and Yale. Uh, he is the foremost afterlife research scientist in the world who studies mediums. And I'm honored to be on the board of directors of the Soul Phone Project, which is Dr. Schwartz and his team are working on technology to communicate with spirits. One of the reasons that he chose to endorse my book, The Afterlife Frequency, which the subtitle is The Scientific Proof of Spiritual Contact and How That Awareness Will Change Your Life, is because many of the principles that I discuss and the terms that I introduce in The Afterlife Frequency are the concepts that he's working with to develop this technology. So um, I've been in his laboratory uh, he's tested me a number of times, mm. and I've also observed and seen the, um, the well, I, I wouldn't say the current version of the soul phone, because it's been about a year and a half since I've been there, but the, the version at that time, and it was beyond impressive. So basically, Yvonne, I would say not just within our lifetime, but maybe within the next couple of years, there will be a device to communicate with the other side. Perhaps the first version, maybe like Morse code, 
but then it's going to be like dial up computers and then we may very well get to the live from the other side it's your aunt martha you know so so we are we are headed when i say we i mean dr schwartz and his mm -hmm. team and, right. and humanity is headed in the direction uh, of this and and the cell phone project is extremely important because for centuries people have discounted and negated spirit communication mm -hmm. that it's woohoo it's mm -hmm. fraudulent um there was a, a movie um with bradley cooper that came out recently and i'm trying to remember the name of it but it was about a a carnival medium and all the tricks they they do to scam people and and kate blanchett's in it and she plays this really sinister villainous i mean it's a great movie from an acting perspective and unfortunately it, it, it reveals how the history of mediumship is fraught with fraud. Mm -hmm. And, and um, there are mediums out there who are fraudulent, but for those of us who are legitimate, and I've been tested in the United Kingdom, I've been tested in the United States in different locations, including at the University of Arizona, um, under, under, you know, through Dr. Schwartz, you know, I'm, I'm the real thing. And there's a, a lot of, um, you know, mediums that, who are the real thing. And this isn't magic. It isn't, you know, there's people who feel based on the religious beliefs that it's somehow negative. Mm -hmm. The truth is it's based on quantum physics. There is a scientific explanation for everything, whether or not we currently have the technology to analyze it, to detect it, and to understand it. And so what Dr. Schwartz is doing is of developing that technology. So um, in your book, and we, we talked in, in the introduction a little that you have this in your DNA kind of um, thing. And I was reading in the book that the what you call the electromagnetic soul is, is located more in our brain than our heart. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The, I, there's a lot of people that feel that, oh, it's the heart that's uh, the yes. conduit of the soul. Um, I, I don't I don't fall into that school of thought. OK. Um, and I explain in great detail that spirit communication is based on physiology. And there's two main receptor areas. One is the solar plexus, which is in the diaphragm region. You know, it's, it's right about right about here. And it is in close proximity to the heart. Um, the other is the pineal gland in the brain. You have to realize that our body has an electrical system. Mm -hmm. The most powerful electrical system is the heart, which makes sense. It's a pump. It pumps 24 seven and it has to, or, or we, or we, uh, you know, in the material form cease to cease to uh, be alive, but the brain, the human brain has the most sophisticated electrical system. And um, the pineal gland within the brain mm -hmm. has calcite and magnetite crystals, and there's an electromagnetic field, and the pineal gland regulates our brainwave frequencies, frequency, and our, our circadian rhythms, and it secretes uh, the hormone melatonin, so it, it regulates a lot of things. The reason that you have jet lag when you get jet lag is because you're in a different uh, location on planet Earth and that disrupts the functioning of the pineal gland until it can adjust to the electromagnetic setting of where you are on planet Earth. And so I developed the term, the electromagnetic soul, to describe what we really are, which is a soul, a spirit, you know, in the fields of psychology, consciousness, which is eternal electromagnetic energy. So our brain is, is a magnificent device, and it's essentially a hard drive. And it is the hard drive which houses our soul. Now, of course, people think, well, the heart gets all these reactions. Well, of course, because the heart's the barometer. It's like when you love someone, you get a certain feeling. When you mm -hmm. dread something, you get a certain feeling. But you also have to realize that the second most complex bundle of nerves outside of the cerebral cortex is the solar plexus, which is just below the heart the pit of the stomach. It's called solar plexus because they radiate from it like the rays of the sun. Mm -hmm. And this is where we receive 
our emotional impulses, our gut feelings. That's where that term comes from. You know, see, for women, women's intuition, <laughs> feel it in your stomach. Women are, are really a lot better than men at processing emotions and being open to psychic activity because it's really an emotional response. You know, men get all, oh, I don't have those feelings until you say it's instinct. Then suddenly it becomes very Denzel, very Harrison Ford, <laughs> very Chris Pratt. Okay, oorah, I've got that, you know. And the thing is, you talk to any first responder, anybody in the military, and they'll tell you about gut feeling. You know, my dad, who was a medium, was a, was a Navy SEAL. Yes. And he always told me, you got to rely on your gut feeling. Every police officer, every friend of mine, every colleague of mine who's been in the military and, and in law enforcement says the same thing. You've got to trust your gut instinct. So we're talking about the same thing, and it's the receptor through the solar plexus. Very fascinating, very fascinating, because I do believe that um, certainly our heart, our brain, our gut, I think we have like the whole package here, and people don't tap into their own psychic ability, whatever that might be. We might not be a medium in the form that you are. We might, maybe if we practice, some of us could be. I mean, I've had visitations from um, my stepfather, uh, my niece who passed. Um, and I, I really think that, that my mother's hovering around me almost every day. So there are, but, but here's the thing. Nobody knows what to do with that if they have it. Do right. You, can you help us? What do we do with it? Uh, sorry, I know my background just changed. Um, I, I got a, a new computer and it just adjusted the video setting. Yeah, so um, I'm sorry, Yvonne, could you please ask that question again? I was like, what? <laughs> and <then I> realized, <laughs> but... No problem. No problem. I was just saying that sometimes <laughs> Windows 11 has its own idea of what's going to be happening. <laughs> well, that'll be interesting, won't it? But, yeah. Um, within the, the everyday world that we live in, there are people, people like myself, and, and um, I, I, I accept it when people make fun of me and they laugh at me, but I absolutely think and believe and know that people have come to me and, and spoken to me and that even, even stranger um, spirits or souls that are out there. Um, in, in one house that I lived in, there was that. And, um, um, but anyway, the question was, because some of us do have this whatever minor psychic ability, we don't, we're not mediums, I can't do what you do. Um, what do we do with it? How do we actually make sense of it? You do have a, a section in the book where you talk about four steps, the four step approach, the right. raft approach. Is that what I should be doing? Absolutely. It's one of the reasons that I wrote the afterlife frequency. And my publisher will 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 crown me if they they if I don't say my book the afterlife frequency. But um, the, one of the reasons that I wrote the afterlife frequency was to explain to people how to get the most out of spirit contact. So not only do I do I explain that there is a rational logical basis for all of this, but I introduced my four step raft technique to teach people how to recognize, accept feel and trust messages from spirits. And um, if you'll indulge me um, uh, for a little story about Raft, um, I was trying to figure out when I was, when I was working on the manuscript for, for the afterlife frequency, how do I do this? <clears throat> how do I explain to people who aren't necessarily mediums that they can still have a mediumistic experience and get the most out of it? Because as you correctly pointed out, Yvonne, Everybody has these abilities. We all have a pineal gland. We all have a solar plexus. We all have the same basic physiology. And people say, well, why can't I do it like you? It's like, well, why can't I, you know, play, play tennis like Roger Federer? Why can't I play guitar like Brad Paisley? Why can't I swim like Michael Phelps? It's because we're all good at doing different things. Some people are better at this than others. Some people have a more pronounced, you know, physical um, state than others. Some people are better at math, et cetera, et cetera. But I was beating my head against the wall and I hit the dreaded writer's block. And I know that you know what that is because you've been in publishing. Yeah, and you know, yeah. writer's block. And here's the thing about it. It always happens on the day 
that I completely left clear so I could just work on my book. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's like nothing was happening. And so, but I have learned walk away. Don't sit there and, and struggle over trying to, to write a sentence. So I decided to go for a walk on the beach because I live near the ocean and I'm, I'm going down my driveway and I get these tingles, these cold chills and tingles. Now I knew, and, and I live in Florida and it was, you know, 90 degrees outside. So I knew it wasn't because it was cold and I was feeling healthy. So I knew I wasn't mm -hmm. sick, but I knew that this was some type of spiritual activity. This is all what I explained with, you know, electromagnetic soul. And I felt guided to go in the opposite direction. So instead of walking on the beach, I, I, I was guided towards this bicycle path. So I'm walking down this bike path near my house around 11 in the morning. I see these two objects shining in the light. And I walk up to them and it's a nickel and a penny. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I go to pick them up and you know my parents have passed and I hear my mom's voice. If they're not heads up, it's bad luck. And I'm laughing because my mom's family was Italian and, you know, Italians, and I, I can say this because I'm Italian, we have a superstition for all occasions. And I'm laughing. And then I <laughs> now, hear my now, dad. Just one, one short interruption of this. My mother always told me, see a penny, pick it up, and all the day you'll have good luck. So I pick well, it up no matter then, what. Then I hear my dad's voice say, it's money, grab it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I, I grab that and I'm, I'm holding them in my the palm of my hand. I go, oh, it's six cents. And then I go, six cents. Mm. And, I, and then the cold chills and tingles started resonating through me. And I knew that they were trying to get me a message. And I said, okay, um, I recognize this. I'm accepting this. What is it? And then I saw a vision in my mind's eye of my dad standing in the ocean up to his waist, holding this blue canvas raft that he had when we were kids. Now, dad, you know, he was a Navy SEAL, but he was also a scuba diver and a swimming instructor. And then it dawned on me. I heard my parents say, raft, recognize signs from spirits, accept the contact is real, feel it without overthinking it, trust the message. And I go, that's what they're trying to tell me. And so I ran back, writer's, writer's block on, the words just flew out of me, and that's where the raft technique. And the thing is, people get uh, hung up on the third step. Mm -hmm. Feel without overthinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to say that, yep. Overthink, overthink, feel, feel, feel. No, 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 no. Block, block, block. Oh, it's my imagination. This can't be true. Oh, you're looking me up. And then and then they come up with all these reasons. And that's what fizzles out spirit communication. And so in, in the afterlife frequency, not only do, do I explain the raft technique, but I take each of those steps and I teach the reader how to over, you know, how to work with them and overcome um, blocking the spirit communication. And the thing is, the raft technique is not just for incidents like that. It's like, so you go to a medium like me and it teaches you how not to block things. It's what I call the no, no, no syndrome. People say no, 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 no to everything. And that creates a block, you know, and, and, and it's how to get past that because it takes hours, days, weeks, even longer for the full impact of a reading to make sense to somebody. And <clears throat> the other thing is that you can apply raft to maybe you had a dream where a loved one comes and talks to you and you're trying to make sense of it. What if you have a near death experience? How do you make sense of that? What about a shared death experience? That's a really um, big field that, that um, I've been studying and I write about where more than one person um, gets caught up in somebody's uh, transition. Usually like when somebody is in the process of dying, uh, close people in close physical proximity, family members, uh, close friends, hospice workers, people not even related to the dying person start to see what's happening. They may see spirits coming to greet that person. They may feel lifted off their feet. They may see a surge of light come out of um, the person's body as they die. These are all forms of electromagnetic souls overlapping, and the raft technique helps you to understand and to make sense of these, you know, because you said something earlier, Avon, about, you know, you had like a presence in your house and people thought you're kooky and crazy. And, you know, that's been the traditional way people have looked at it. But 
if it's kooky and crazy, how come things like this have been reported since the dawn of human history? Mm -hmm. There's nothing kooky or crazy about it. It's just that now we're in the 21st century. We have quantum physics. We have been able to now apply the scientific method to understanding that the human consciousness, our electromagnetic soul, survives physical death. So while I was reading the book, and, I, and I'm not quite finished with it, um, a couple things occurred to me that you talk about you talk about the world's religions a little bit um, because a lot some of it, yeah, actually quite a bit like extensive. A lot. But but um, but I mean you're not pontificating and it's not anything like that. It's it's actually so uh, illuminating as I was reading it um, because I am not what people would call a Christian, and uh, yet uh, my sisters are and they pray for me every day. Isn't isn't that nice? I'm so happy for them. I well, pray. it's good to have positive energy. <laughs> well, I pray. I believe in prayer. I just I just are not buying into the tenets of their their. Particular what you mean? Religion. Mean there's there's just only one way. Right. There's just one way. Right. Yeah, and and the thing is, um, I was supposed to be a Catholic priest. Oh, I was being oh groomed, and I was going to go into the clergy, but I decided when I was a, a teen that it was too constricting, and 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 so I've studied all the world's major religions. That's mm -hmm. why you know my brand, Psychic Explorer. That's why I go mm -hmm. all over the world. I've studied with Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, Jains. Um, all types of uh, Christian belief systems, Native Americans, the Hawaiian belief systems. And, and the thing is, once you get the mythology and the dogma out of the way, you start to see a consistency right across the board. And so that's why I do incorporate um, passages from scripture and, and uh, analogies to different religious beliefs alongside the scientific. And I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, but no, for example, no. you know, Moses, we all, you know, everyone that's seen the Ten Commandments or anyone that's been through Sunday school knows that Moses saw the burning bush, the bush that burned yet did not burn. Well, I explain this as how would somebody like Moses, specifically Moses, who lived in the Bronze Age, explain an encounter with an intensive, concentrated form of electromagnetic energy? AKA God, mm -hmm. you would describe it in the terminology that you were familiar with and the most powerful form of EM or most powerful form of energy that you would know would be fire. I mean, outside of lightning would be fire. So that's how we describe it as the fire that burned yet did not burn the bush. And you see the same thing in other, other religions. I mean, you see in the Pentecost, the tongues of fire mm -hmm. above the apostles and in uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. You see references uh, to the light in, in Islam and certainly in Hinduism and Buddhism and in, in the Native American religions. You see them in, in all the religions. Why? Well, light is the only form of electromagnetic energy visible to the human eye. Mm -hmm. And so when people that have these intensive spiritual experiences, they talk about these lights. Moses is, you know, assuming the story is true, and I'm not saying that it is or it isn't, but let's assume that it is. How would he describe this? Mm -hmm. This brilliant light, you know, and it didn't burn the bush. And so, so people explain these things. And so I take an interfaith approach. And I always, I mean, with all due respect to our evangelical friends and, and our Muslim friends and people of other, there is only one way. And mm -hmm. it's like, I like what the Hindus say. There, there's an old Hindu saying that there are many paths up the mountain, and the only person on the wrong path is the one who runs around the mountain telling everyone else their path is wrong. Mm, yeah, isn't that, I mean, that is so perfect. It, it, it really, that speaks to me. It speaks to me highly and greatly and, and um, personally because that's what I believe. It's, it's not... We're, we're all here, human beings, to be connected, to help each other, to, to you know, not to, to do all this fighting and all this uh, um, 
war that's that's going on. But let's let's put that aside a minute. Um, I have a couple <laughs> questions that that I really need to ask, and one of them is um, so being a medium and and going out and you go to bookstores when you have your books, and then you sometimes do your medium work there. Uh, what did you do during COVID? Because you couldn't go out. Oh, um, uh, everything went online. Um, I've been doing group sessions online. I've been addressing um, organizations. In fact, I was uh, one of the keynote speakers at the International Association for Near Death Studies last year. I've spoken at Spiritual Awakenings International. Um, I do events. You know, people want to find out about my upcoming events. Please subscribe to my newsletter and uh, by visiting um, afterlifefrequency.com, just like my book, afterlifefrequency.com. Um, I've got a weekly live stream show where we take calls from listeners, and the vast majority of the readings that I do are telephone readings, and people say, well, how can you do this on the telephone? Because electromagnetic souls, all forms of electromagnetic energy move at the speed of light, which is the same speed as a telephone call, as the same speed that this show is being broadcast, 186,282 miles per second. So in the time that it took me to say that, one of your loved ones in spirit could have been back and forth to the moon about, oh, 10 times. <laughs> okay, that's that's really fascinating. Now, the other thing that I really wanted to talk about was the human-animal bond and how does all of this work with that? Because everyone knows that uh, I'm a, a pet person. Um, I'm an animal person and I believe animals have souls. At the risk of, of sounding like a Trekkie, a rather trekker. Okay. There's a difference in the Star Trek world. A Trekkie is somebody that, you know, is kind of goofy about it. A trekker, you know, we're more serious. There was the one movie where, um, which involved whales. And I remember Spock saying, yeah. it is only human arrogance that assumes humans are the only intelligent species on earth. And I love that line. The, the truth of the matter is any being that is alive is alive because of electromagnetic energy, okay? And the thing is, animals have souls, and any being capable of the emotion of love is capable of spirit communication. And I know this because I've conducted over 15,000 readings for people, and in a huge majority of those readings, pets come through. Mm -hmm. I've communicated with all types of animals. Um, Dogs, of course, cats, birds, um, hamsters, gerbils, uh, horses. I even um, once connected with a bear, which was quite interesting. Um, I did a reading for this lady one time, and 24 spirits came through. She came from a really big family. I didn't know this till after the reading when she said, well, I had 11 brothers and sisters, but she had 21 human spirits, two dogs, and Rusty the horse came through. Uh, which was interesting. And animal communication is fascinating because, um, you see, people assume that it's going to be woof, woof, or meow, meow. It's not. You see, spirits don't speak, human spirits don't speak a human language. Mm. They speak frequency. That's why I can communicate with spirits who did not necessarily speak English. Because what the spirit does is the electromagnetic soul vibrates, sends a wave of frequency, and that electromagnetic energy then interfaces with the electromagnetic energy of my brain and gets converted into recognizable concepts based on my memories, feelings, and cultural associations. Mm. Now let's take that to an animal, okay? Once released to the body, an animal becomes part of the collective consciousness, which human spirits are a part of too, which angelic entities are, and, and think of each electromagnetic soul as a drop of water. And then when we die, we plunge into this eternal sea, this eternal sea of souls. Well, what happens is when a spirit of an animal comes through, they maintain their identity. And you see, the, the cool thing about animals is they either like you or they don't. And they don't have all the nuances and preconditions and strings that human relationships have. So animal communication, they tend to be very direct and very straightforward. Um, one of the most memorable 
uh, connections I made uh, for somebody is in my, my last book, um, Evidence of Eternity, where I did a reading for um, this, this gentleman. It was in a public setting, and this entity came through, and I, I said, this doesn't feel like a human and, and I saw this guy and he was like this you know, tough guy and I could see a tear coming out of his eye. And he said, no, he goes, I was a canine cop. And, and then I got it. And, and, and the dog that came through was one of those very, very special dogs. This is like one of those dogs that used to go hunt with Osama bin Laden. I mean, this dog was like <laughs> super, super smart. And the dog came through and said, um, gave indications about, the red pillow. And, and the cop said, yeah, I used to have this red pillow that I put on the armrest in the patrol car so he could lay his, his uh, head there because he used to drool. Okay. And then the, the dog said, I reacted faster than any human could at 3 a.m. I thought this guy was going to fall out of his chair. He said, oh my God. And I go, what? He said, well, we were chasing a murder suspect. And this guy ran into the woods and, you know, the cops are in the woods and I got separated from everybody and I was running and it was, you know, a, a, there was a lot of moonlight. Then something came at me from behind a tree and hit me really hard. And I was on the ground and this knife I could see in the moonlight was coming down on me. And then a shadow flew over me and grabbed it. He goes, it was my dog, Ajax. He goes, Ajax came out of nowhere, grabbed him and pulled him off of me. And like, and it was, it was so cool because the whole crowd started cheering, you know, this guy's crying and his dog saved him. And he said, if that had been a human partner, I'd be dead. He said, that's the beauty of working with canines. They don't hesitate, they react. And then, and then uh, the next message Ajax uh, transmitted was, and I forgive you, you did the right thing. And this guy completely broke down because he had to put Ajax down um, because the dog had all these degenerative spinal condition. The dog was in, in immense pain. And um, this guy, the, the, this, uh, the reason I bring this reading up because I know that, that animals are very important to you, but I wanted to show you that the type of detail that animals can give. Now, um, I tell people, you know, if you want an, a reading just focusing on animals, then I'm not your medium. I prefer to concentrate on people's human relationships. If animals come through, that's fine, okay? Um, there are people who hold themselves out to be animal communicators because here's what will happen. Animals will come in, they'll give you the message you need to know, and then they're out, okay? <laughs> but to spend an entire hour, well, get them back, get them back. That's not always how it works. It may with some other mediums, but that's, that's not how they work with me. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I was doing a group event one time and this guy's horse came through and I go, this horse hated you, it tried to bite you. And he goes, I hated that horse too. Every time I went here, it tried to bite me. <laughs> you know, so, so sometimes they'll tell you, yeah, I didn't really like you. So, so there. <laughs> so there. Well, we're, we're at the end of our time and I have one last quick question that, that um, you know, I, I, if you had a message you wanted to share with the world, a spiritual message that you wanted to leave us with, what would it be? There's a five point message and it was communicated to me um, actually by the spirit of my mother. It was two weeks after she died. I was, I was practicing law at the time. I was a senior partner of a law firm and I was overcome with a wave of grief and I was driving from court to my, my law firm. So I, I pulled over because I figured I can't walk into the office crying. I just, let me cry and get it out. And this flash of light went off in the car, Yvonne. And I turned to the passenger side and for a second, I saw my mother's silhouette in this beautiful silver white light. And her voice filled my head. And she said, Mark, you've been given the gift of mediumship so that you would not be crushed by grief, but now you must help others cope with their grief. You must teach them that God exists. Heaven exists. Our soul is an immortal living spirit that we can communicate with souls and that you will be reunited with your loved ones when it is your appointed time to, 
see them in the light. And I just sank back into my seat and broke out in a sweat. So that was the message. And that's my message. God exists. Heaven exists. Our souls are immortal living spirits. We can communicate with electromagnetic souls and we'll be reunited with our loved ones in the light that is God when it is our appointed time to leave this world. Well, that's really, really a good um, a good ending point here today. But there was so much more that we could obviously talk about, but hold the book up again because I really want people to see this. Um, this is a really important book, no matter what your belief system is, no matter what um, you're going through at the moment. I, I, as I read the book, and I, again, have not quite finished it yet, um, it's really speaking to me from the the, the center of the fact that, again, human beings are here to help each other, to be connected. And I, I believe in, in, you know, after reading this book and all the scientific studies and the things that you talk about in it from the scientific um, um, viewpoint, um, I want people to also understand that, yes, this, this thing that we're in here ages and, 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 and has its weaknesses, but the soul or whatever you want to call it, the, the electromagnetic soul, our consciousness, it does live on. In, in anyone who thinks that it doesn't, I don't know. I just don't understand why not. But get the book, folks. Go to the website at theafterlifefrequency.com. I will write all this up in the blog post. I will have it on YouTube. And maybe, maybe we'll be lucky and we can get Mark to come back and talk to us again. I'd be honored. Thank you so much, Yvonne. And, uh, I, and for all the listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you.